having me. Um, you have to forgive me if I'm glancing at my phone, but this is the first time in three weeks that my wife and I have not been with the baby. Uh, we had a baby on August 31st. But my mother-in-law is texting us every 10 minutes pictures and thumbs up. Uh, so thank you, as I said, for being here. I was a commissioner in Elizabeth Township for two terms, and I decided to step up to the plate and run for a uh, state house seat uh, due to reapportionment. Something that my predecessor taught me, uh, my uh, commissioner that was in Elizabeth Township for 40 years, he told me that you need to know three things about serving in local government. The first is always return phone calls. The second is never raise taxes. And the third is never forget the people who put you where you are. And I had a really difficult, challenging primary this spring. We won by 18 or 19 points. But it was without question South Park, Jefferson Hills, and Pleasant Hills that delivered me and put me where I am. And I will not forget that when I'm in the state house. I definitely won't forget that. Um, just a little campaign update. Tomorrow we are going to hit our 10,000th door. I don't know how that compares with you, Gary, but you know, I'm, I'm trying. Get three more thousand in, you'll be fine. Uh, but a few bullet points that I wanted to share with you, because I've talked to so many people, so many Democrats, especially up in the primary, uh, and I can honestly say that nobody is happy. I haven't met one person that asked me, are you Republican or Democrat? And if I said Republican, they, they never turned me away, always welcoming. And I spoke to one gentleman in Elizabeth Township about a week ago who was a strong, staunch Democrat. And he basically told me that the party has left him. Uh, the party, at one time, the Democratic Party was the party for the working man. Uh, my, I have a grandmother that lives in Duquesne. She's one of the last holdouts. She built her house there. She has a picture of John F. Kennedy in her kitchen. And that party's gone. Yeah, I mean, it's over. And this gentleman that I talked to in Elizabeth Township told me that instead of the Democratic Party doing what's best for the people representing us, they are appeasing the 1% minority that is offended at everything. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you mean? And I said, do you mind if I use this? Because I'm going to be at an event. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, actually, I, got, a, so I got this card, and I jotted down the, uh, the note that he told me. And I said, well, well what is it that these 1% these of the woke uh, individuals in the Democratic Party are pushing. And he said the first is they want to scrub the word women from the dictionary. And I said, and I said, well, I said well, how is the word you know, women offensive? And he said, well, now, instead of using the term women, now we need to use birthing people or menstruating people. Because we can't offend people that want to identify as one or the other. And I said, well, what else are they up to? What else are they doing? And he said, well, he said, um, allowing you know, men to compete in women's sports, allowing men to be in girls' locker rooms in high school, you know, that's a major, major issue. Uh, teaching and indoctrinating our youth. I mean, we have five-year-old kids in the city of Pittsburgh that are being taught critical race theory and being taught that they're racist. And my response is, you're not racist, you're five. <laughs> and that, that's, what these people, that's what these people are all about. We have, we have a 1% of the woke minority in the Democratic Party that hate police. They would eliminate all of our police, defund them all, and replace them with social workers because social workers will beat the fentanyl crisis that we have in our state right now. You know, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And that's why um, we have to get out in November because there's only one thing stopping all of that stuff from being implemented here, and that's all of you. And that's all of our candidates running, and that's why I'm so glad that we have Mike Doyle he is the strongest Republican candidate for the city of Pittsburgh in that congressional seat since 1971, John Hines. <laughs> strong Dr. Oz, strong in Philadelphia, strong in that part of the state, he'll definitely deliver. Carrie Lewis Del Rosso, I see her on my Facebook feed every day <laughs> with someone all over the place. It's unreal. Mastriano is going to win, he's going to be a phenomenal governor. And we'll deliver. You know, we need to tackle inflation. Uh, our infrastructure is in pretty bad shape. We literally have bridges falling down. Uh, my wife is a nurse over at West Bend, and she was on that bridge about five minutes before it came down. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a mess. Uh, parental rights really important. Tackling inflation, I mean, that's a, that's a major issue. Um, but.
but I am really confident about every Republican candidate we have, and I cannot thank you enough for being here fundraising because it's not cheap. You know, I think in my own race I'm spending about fifty thousand on mail alone. You know, yard signs for the carry they're, they're not cheap. So I I appreciate it. We can't do it without you. We're not going to forget you whenever we get there. Get out and vote. Bring your neighbors. Bring your family, and we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew.